We are here at Beehive Media in Hopkinton to talk with Bill Shander today about the things in life he has been curious about, whether they are his work in data visualization and social media, or whether it is working for Project Just Because, or hitting the mountain bike trails, or playing hockey at the crack of dawn twice a week for 40 years. All of it very interesting and about being curious. So I look forward to going inside and talking some more. Hi, Bill. Thank you for having me here in your beautiful office in Hopkinton today. Thank it's you. like a really nice working space to have. Um, and we're taking time in the middle of your day. And so thank you for sharing that to talk a little bit about yourself, your work, what you do here, and your life as well. I'm wondering to start off, since you work right on Main Street here in Hopkinton, you overlook uh, what's going on outside with these great big windows. Yeah. Um, can you tell a little bit about how you got connected to Hopkinton? What brought you here? Uh, when did you move here? That sure. kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, I grew up in Massachusetts. So I, I grew up in Brookline, um, had moved away for 10 years moved back. We lived in Marblehead for a mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. which was amazing. So we yes. lived right on the ocean. Mm -hmm. We rented a place. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We moved to Brookline for two years, which is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we realized we wanted a yard and space and nature. And so we decided to move further out. Mm -hmm. um, and my sister was living in Ashland at the time. So we figured, let's look west in that neighborhood. And you know, we just fell in love with a piece of land that we found here in town. And mm -hmm. you know, we just liked the town. So it just fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was that? You uh, that was uh, 13 years ago this summer. We built ago. our house, yeah, July. It was when we moved in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by we, you're referring to your family, yep. uh, wife and daughter here. Yep. Yes. And so 13 years you've been a part of the community and uh, you uh, have been working in other places and then more recently bringing your work here as well. Yeah, when we first moved here, my office was in Boston, and then uh, I moved the office to Hopkinton, I guess about four years ago, maybe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is great. I love not yes. commuting anymore. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you walk to work? <laughs> I, do, I can't walk. It's <laughs> can't a little too far work. to walk, yeah, but it's, uh -huh. it's a nice short drive. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so... I keep threatening to run, but it's, it's hard <laughs> to run with my laptop, so... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, but... That's something to think about. Leaving the laptop here, running, then running yeah. the marathon, maybe. There you go. <laughs> Just start at home and keep going. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, um, so you you've been in, in Massachusetts all your life, and you brought your family and your work here to Hopkinton. How about your roots? Um, how you got started in life uh, in Massachusetts? You said you grew up in Brookline. Brookline area. Yes. Yep. Uh huh. And so, um, what would you say that, as a child, you like to do in your spare time? Mm -hmm. uh, what you spent time playing? Sure. Uh, well, I grew up, uh, and I started. So we, I was actually born in Denver, oh, and okay. moved here when I was, uh, I guess, five or six. Mm -hmm. And that was at the height of the Bruins' ascendancy. Oh, I mean, they had just okay. won the cup a couple of years before we moved here, but the Bruins mm -hmm. were still the thing in town. Mm -hmm. So my mom was all excited to show me the Bruins games, and I got all excited by the Bruins. And so I started playing hockey when I was, I guess, first grade. So wow. I've been playing hockey ever mm -hmm. since, and I've also always loved to ski. So that was always a bit of a conflict because if you play hockey, you can't really ski so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, my father still lives in Colorado and, and has always. So uh, I would always go out there every winter to ski and play hockey all the rest of the winter is great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you played hockey in first grade. That's yeah. pretty young, pretty yeah. dedicated then. Yeah, I'm, I'm pushing my 40th year playing hockey now, so wow. <laughs> kind of a scary How about number. That? Yeah. So uh, when do you play hockey if you're spending a lot of time working and with family? Yeah, I play early in the mornings on Tuesdays mm -hmm. and Fridays. Uh-huh. How early so, is it? The uh, game starts at 630. Mm, my so. goodness, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a, a very active way to start the day. It, it is. Open up your eyes, right? It's a good way to wake up. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And what's so great about playing hockey in the 40th year? 
You know, it actually gets more and more fun every year. There wow. was a period like when I was in high school, college. In fact, I didn't play in college. Mm -hmm. I took about five years off um, where it wasn't really fun anymore. Mm. But literally, I mean, I have more fun now than I ever did. Mm. And it's just, there's something about it. It's just, uh, you know, it's fast moving. It's, um, there's a flow to it, you know, sort oh. of like a, it's a very sort of, I guess it's probably like people who dance feel, you know, there's yeah. just like a flow and a mm -hmm. rhythm and when you make a great play, it just feels mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And I also, I play with great guys. I mean, it's not, um, it's not like aggressive men's league competitive. It's really just pick up with mm -hmm. a bunch of guys I've known for years. So it's, it's social, it's fun, it's active. Mm -hmm. Every I week? I play twice a week, yeah. Tuesdays twice, and twice Fridays. Twice a week, through all through the year. All around, yeah, all year round. No competition? Nope. I Other. sometimes play in a tournament here or there, but you I don't do. like I don't play men's league anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's more than than that for you. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and that's very ambitious uh, to start the way that way. So, okay, hockey uh, was a big part of your childhood. Yeah. And um, knowing that you work in social media uh, and communication with words, mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, that you recall from childhood that got you started in that direction? You know, uh, they have computers in your childhood. I had no computers. No computers. Zero uh -huh. computing yeah. experience, and I didn't do computers in college. I mean, I have uh -huh. no. There's no reason I should be doing what I'm doing in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I was a kid, I was really good at math. So that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was terrible at English. Mm -hmm. And then I went to college and maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, but it, somehow I became an English major in college, uh -huh. even though that was exactly uh -huh. what I wasn't good at. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Colorado. I was a ski bum for two years after college. Yeah. I graduated college and skied. Um, and I worked at the local radio station where I DJed country music every wow. morning. Uh -huh. uh, and I also had a talk show in the afternoon and mm -hmm. I was also the news director. Um, mm -hmm. And then I went to grad school for journalism. So that, there, there was sort of a, this natural mm -hmm. progression of things. Yeah. Um, and journalism is a really good uh, sort of background for what I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, my whole career has been unplanned until the last, I'd say, two or three years. It's just sort of things keep happening to me, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they've been good things and they've worked out well. Oh, so, wow. well, congratulations. And yeah, thanks. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? I think we've left that a mystery, what your work is until now. If you could sure. tell a little bit about what Beehive is about and what you do. Sure. Uh, so I do uh, information design and data visualization. Mm -hmm. And people usually say, That's a lot what of does words. that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I work with clients who have data yeah. Um, and so typical clients for me are, um, I work with like a lot of consulting firms because mm -hmm. they do research to, you know, essentially do thought leadership content. Mm -hmm. uh, and I work with government clients and I work with uh, like NGOs, like mm -hmm. non-governmental organizations. So they do research and I help them take the data from that research mm -hmm. and make it into visual experiences, either online, mm -hmm. uh, interactive experiences or uh, infographics for print or mm -hmm. reports, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's really about you know taking very dense, uh, heavy, number-driven mm -hmm. information and making it accessible for normal human beings. Mm. So. Uh huh. Okay. That yeah, very important thing. Yeah, and yeah. it's like you know the journalistic side is because it's about like sort of parsing complex information and making it simple and understandable. Mm -hmm. um, there's design because it's then making it beautiful and sort of accessible to people. Mm -hmm. And then there's technology because it's actually creating these interactive things out of it. And so mm -hmm. uh, I'm a self-taught programmer mm -hmm. on the computing side mm -hmm. uh, and mostly self-taught designer also. And then I have the actual experience as a journalist. And it's weird, like those three things, you know, actually being able to think right brain and left brain right. and also communications-y mm -hmm. are, are sort right. of three weird things. And aren't, there aren't many careers in the world where you can do all three. And yeah. that's one of the reasons I love what I do. Uh -huh. so. That's great. So, um, this has been your business for how long? 20 years. 20 21 years, years almost, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you started in New York City? Uh, it was uh, north of New York, yeah. North of New York, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, from what I understand, you started with employees also and yeah. shifted over time? Yeah, so uh, when I first started the company, uh, you know, it was just me, like, you know, usual small company startup. Uh, over the years, I've had as many as 15 people. Mm -hmm. And then about three years ago, I decided to 
um, change everything. So essentially, I always did data visualization as part of what I do, mm. um, but the business really essentially was web design and development. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that was very general and very commodity, you know, sort of commoditized. Uh, and about three years ago, I realized that what I love to do is just the data visual visualization mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. So I got rid of all the rest of the business um, and made sure all my employees found jobs. It wasn't mm -hmm. as cold hearted well, as that sounds. That's considerate of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but essentially sort of slowly wound down that business yeah. and decided to just focus on data visualization because um, it's what I love to do. It's the yeah. most interesting part of what uh -huh. I've always done. And in a way, this is uh, at this time your niche. Yeah. Uh, it's something that you are a pioneer in uh, having a platform for and being known out in the world, right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm a pioneer, but it's certainly, it's a field that um, five years ago was a phrase you didn't hear very often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right now it's exploding. And wow. so for those of us who've been doing it for a long time, um, yeah, we have a position where we're, maybe I'm a little more known for it than some. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I am... Uh, I teach it, so mm -hmm. I teach it on lynda.com. I have three courses on lynda.com, um, and I speak at conferences about it. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, like I was telling you before, you know, the phone rings for mm -hmm. me. Like people say, hey, can we talk to you mm -hmm. about blah, 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 mm -hmm. whereas in the old days it was me frantically reaching out trying to find business, you know. <laughs> so it's a lot more uh -huh. fun when your phone rings than when you're trying to call other people mm -hmm. to sell them things. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Well, that's wonderful. And from what I understand, you said you love your job. I do. Uh -huh. This is the best it's ever been. Like I, uh -huh. I, I wake up in the morning really excited to do what I do, mm. um, and it, part of it is because mm. you know I get to do work that actually is important that I care about. Yeah. Um, I get to stretch all those muscles: design, technology, and journalism. Um, and also, I love speaking. Like so, I speak at conferences and I do mm. the teaching thing, and I love it. Like it's actually mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have no complaints. Mm. Yeah, that, and that's something new for you too. I saw that on your website. I love speaking, and yeah. I saw some of your webinars on there, and you do a great job with that. Thank you. Um, so uh, that's uh, information people can see on beehive.com. Uh, Beehivemedia.com. Media.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's and it's a great website. It catches the eye. Yeah. And really, uh, for us scanners, as yeah. you refer to on exactly. the website, it, it really shows you where to focus and what to learn yeah. uh, in a short amount of time. Uh, yeah. So it is really well done. Um, so, and, and I understand that mm, organizations like the UN and, as you said, government uh, yeah. and universities, places like that, are interested in your kind of work. Yeah. So you're moving around and you're traveling with it as well. Yep. It's going great, and that's wonderful to hear. And I imagine it's not easy, the traje trajectory of it over time, um, in getting to that place where it all clicks in. I wonder if you have any advice for people who want to start their own business in something they love and they have to yeah. persevere. Is there uh, anything that you would advise? You know, the best advice is to persevere. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I... Um, I can tell you that when I first started my company, um, I thought I had a niche. I thought I had an audience that I could go to. Yeah. I thought I sort of had this perfect way to sort of sell my ideas. My, my very first job out of uh, grad school was as a journalist. I was writing for a magazine focusing on the financial services industry. Mm. I hated that job. Mm. I'd left within nine months. It was my okay. only job I've ever had as a professional. Um, and then I started my company. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to do video production. Actually, it was the very beginning of my company, hmm. focusing on the financial services industry. I'll, I'll just call up all these people I interviewed, and they'll, buy, they'll pay me to make videos for them. Mm -hmm. you know? And it was very naive. I was young and stupid. Um, and I went my first six months in business without getting a single check. Mm -hmm. you know, no income, mm -hmm. no prospects. Like I was clueless. Mm -hmm. and, but I persevered, mm -hmm. and eventually I started landing some projects. And eventually along came the web and sort of I shifted focus and one of many shifts in focus. Um, but I guess I always had faith in that I knew what I was doing and that people would see that in me. Mm. And I think I've always been a good communicator. So whenever I would get to the point where I actually got to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. I could convince them. And it wasn't so much convincing, but I could sort of demonstrate that I knew their, what their problems were and how to help solve their problems as related to communications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, yeah, you got to fight through some dark times sometimes in business. And it is, 
you know, w I think it was Woody Allen who said 80% of success is just showing up. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. really true because most people, I shouldn't say most people, a lot of people aren't very good at what they do and or they don't really show up or they don't really deliver on the details or they don't answer their emails within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. There's so many mm -hmm. little things. Mm -hmm. And if you do the little things right, the big things mm -hmm. tend to work out. Wow. That sounds like something we should put in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> And probably a lot of time and dedication. You said persevere, yeah. so yeah, that sounds like good advice to me. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. I worked you. very, very, very hard for a lot of years. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. work as hard now, which I think just yeah, you know, I've got I've I've gotten to the point where I've been lucky enough where mm -hmm. it's a little easier right now, and I'm sure that'll change. But um, yeah, I've had some some long hours and long weeks. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, just uh, quickly, and then we're, I want to move on and ask about the other parts of your life, but uh, say there is a particular um, market, uh, something that people want to use your business for, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, let's pick something. Can you pick something uh, that you've worked on a university uh, uh. program or... Yeah, I mean, like I, you know, I did. I've done projects for. I'm doing a project right now for the World Bank, um, wow. and so they did a survey of um, essentially financial inclusion in some countries in Africa. So it's all mm. about, you know, who has access to what type of financial services in these countries. Which is kind of dense, and you think of numbers. Yeah. So how do you how do you make something like that pop? So, you know, essentially I work with their editorial team. Mm. You know, they're, they're doing this as a report to sort of convince people that this program is worthwhile and that the, service, that the, the plans that they have for mobile banking are good ideas, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and so we sort of agree on what is the story. It's, it's really like a mm -hmm. journalistic thing. And mm -hmm. I use this really awesome acronym, which I should write down on the, on the uh, wall, because you're not going to remember it if I just say it out loud. <laughs> but it, I, that's my joke, because it's this handy dandy acronym, but of course you can't really remember it. Uh, it's, it's Korowitz, is how I pronounce oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's know what you really want to say. And because the main challenge mm. people have when communicating anything, but in particular data, what they really do is they come to me and they say, hey, Bill, we got this data. Can we make something cool, like an inf infographic? And I say, sure. What, what, what's it about? Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't know. Mm. And so my, I would say half of my job is to get my clients to figure out what they're actually trying to say. Mm -hmm. And then making you know, the pictures and the interactivity and all the rest of it, it, it almost becomes easy. I see. But if yeah, you really know yeah. what you're trying to say, then the communication part really yeah. sort of solves itself. That makes sense. Seems simple. It is simple. Um, but probably so often overlooked. Often, very often. Uh -huh. Almost 99% yeah. of the time. Wow, wow. <laughs> Maybe oh. not that high, 90 though. <laughs> So. so, well, uh, thank you. Sure. Was, we have these kernels uh, that we're getting <laughs> from this interview, but Good. I don't want to just talk about work yep. uh, for you, but congratulations on the good work you've done and thank this you. great business. But in your other time, when you have some free time, uh, it sounds like you have carried on with an interest um, with being out in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, since childhood, you continue with hockey, although that's inside mostly, yeah. right? And uh, you still ski uh, throughout all these years. And yep. uh, anything else um, that you like to do in your free time? Uh, well, I do like to go mountain biking in the Upton State Forest, which is right behind our house. Oh, at the um, State Forest in Hopkinton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, at the Upton, Upton State Forest, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just because that's near to our house, and there's a lot of great mountain biking trails in there. Um, are but, you, you know, on your own, or are there other mountain bikers up there that you're... They, yeah, you definitely see other people okay, back there, yeah. and people on horseback sometimes, and mm -hmm. hikers, and it's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, I like spending time with my family, and mm -hmm. we like to travel, and... Uh, uh, where have you been out in the world? Uh, so as a family, we go to Asia. We're now going pretty much every summer to Thailand. Um, uh -huh. And, uh, and I understand you're learning Thai to get I'm ready for the trip. Trying to learn Thai, yes. yeah, because uh -huh. Becky, she was born in Thailand, and mm -hmm. her... Uh, biological family is still there, so we visit them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Becky doesn't speak Thai; she speaks Chinese, but not uh -huh. Thai because she was her adoptive family was Chinese. But uh, so I'm going to learn Thai, and I will be translating for Becky wow. in Thai, which will be <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Uh -huh. But uh, how do you say uh, know what you have to say? Do you know that yet in Thai? Uh, not exactly. Not quite yet. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I know simple. most of those words, but how to say exactly that? I'm not sure. But <laughs> <laughs> Might be good to bring over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, something more 
uh, like conversation. Can you give a little sample of what you're learning? Uh, sure, I can just say, um, which means I want to eat. <laughs> oh, that's an important one to yeah. say also. Yeah. Oh, very good. It, it sounds good. Thank you. It's <laughs> yes, getting there. Sir. That's coming up, your trip to Thai, Thailand. Yeah, this summer. Uh huh. Yeah. And where else have you been? Uh, we've been to, I mean, we've been to Asia a bunch of times as a family. Um, we went to Beijing a few years ago and wow. Hong Kong a few times, Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, we've been to Europe, you know, we've mm -hmm. been to Switzerland and France and Portugal and Spain. And we've been around. I mean, like, I, you know, I grew up, we weren't poor, but we weren't rich. Um, and we never got to go anywhere. I mean, like, mm -hmm. we, maybe my mom right. just didn't travel, you know, single parent. But, uh, you know, my daughter has been like all over the world. Mm. She's like mm -hmm. the best traveled 17 year old mm -hmm. I know. Uh -huh. So, you know, she's, she's had it pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh -huh. uh, and I, I used to do a lot of work in Dubai. So I went to Dubai oh. about a dozen times over the years, wow. but the family never got to go with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. but Where would you say that your favorite place in the, in the world is so far? Uh, I'd probably have to say Thailand, Thailand because, yeah. I mean, we're sort of driven by, of course, the one thing I say in Thai is I want to eat. And like, <laughs> you know, as a family, we're pretty driven by food. Yeah. And uh, you like food. We like yeah. food. And <laughs> Thailand has the best food wow. anywhere. Like, mm. I, I have no hesitation in saying that mm. at all. Mm -hmm. you know, like, literally, you'll go to the airport and you'll have the best meal you've ever had. Wow. So you can't go wrong. If you like food, mm -hmm. Thailand's the place to be. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it sounds like you have been to many interesting places all over and uh, have taken that in. I imagine that influences um, your work in a way and, and your life, uh, taking in different cultures, uh, yeah. what you learn from that, the language, I imagine, also. Yeah. Um, so, moving on, do you have uh, anything else uh, ahead on your, you know, progressive bucket list not immediate but yeah <laughs> um you know nothing specific really i mean really mm -hmm. things are good right now and uh you know i have plans and ideas for like the business side of things that i'm sort of evolving and uh you know family brooke is going off to college in another year and becky and i are trying to figure out what we're going to do next yeah. you know mm -hmm. or we may move to boston we may move Somewhere in California, we may stay right here. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. and, but it's sort of exciting to be starting to think about that and to know mm -hmm. that there is another chapter that's coming, even though it's going to have pain associated with it, not having broken the house all the time. Yeah. It's also going to be really exciting and mm -hmm. interesting, too. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a, a good way to look at it and facing the years after children when they leave for college, which is a good and yeah. important thing if, or work wherever they go, right? Yeah. But uh, to be honest and mention that there's pain yeah. uh, with that uh, loss and that shift in uh, family also. Yeah. Um, but to look at it that way, hopeful, not sure what's next, uh, I think is important in life uh, yeah. as well. And I think that you also are involved in some community organizations uh, yeah. right now uh, in that transitioning while you're still here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, can you tell, is that Project Just Because? Yeah, so I'm on the board of Project Just Because, and I have been now for, I'm not sure how, years. I mean, for you know, five, six, seven years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're going through a really interesting shift. Uh, you know, we're trying to really professionalize it and really mm -hmm. bring a lot more structure and uh, process to it, and mm -hmm. it's going really well. So I think uh, over the coming couple of years, you know, Project Just Because will it may grow a little bit, and mm -hmm. it's certainly, I think, we hope that it'll be more prominent and visible in the community, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not familiar with Project Just Because and the work they do, it is an unbelievable organization. Mm -hmm. You know, they help people all across Massachusetts, mostly Metro West, mm -hmm. um, with, you know, essentially essentials that families need for, for, for mm -hmm. families that are in need. Um, and, you know, last year we did, I think, over $10 million in goods that were distributed to people wow. on a shoestring budget. You would not believe wow. how tightly run it is. And mm. um, we also run the food pantry in town now mm -hmm. as well. Mm. So yeah, I'm very, very proud of work that, that they do, mm -hmm. that Cheryl Ann does for the most part, and Karen and the other people there. Um, yeah. And I imagine they're grateful to have you on board and helping them maybe with some data visualization or perspective yeah. as well. Um, so, um, I imagine when you face where you're going next, 
uh, if it goes beyond Hopkinton, you will be missed also. But yeah. taking Beehive with you is something you can do, right? Wherever Absolutely. you go next also. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's good to know. You just have to check out on the web where you are, right? Exactly. And that you might be teaching or giving webinars somewhere. Maybe you'll be on TED Talk next. That's so the we'll hope. We'll look for you there. <laughs> that would be exciting. Maybe one day. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, and thinking about TED Talk and how often there are uh, stories or lessons, morals, part of that, I was wondering for you if you have any important life lesson uh, that you have held on to that has guided you some way in life that you could share. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would say there's probably two things. Um, one is, as I mentioned before, you know, my career has really just happened to me. You know, just mm -hmm. sort of it fell into my lap and almost without exception, every step along the way has just sort of happened. Hmm. And not that I was like a completely passive you know, yeah. person on the train, but like, you know, I, I didn't really have a strategic plan for a lot of years. Um, but from a, both a career standpoint and a sort of family standpoint, it's always been, uh, I think my primary um, character trait that has helped me and therefore hmm. sort of a life lesson is uh, just having an open mind and being curious. Hmm. Um, because I found that the, maybe the reason I went into journalism and the reason I love what I do and the reason um, I've always been open and, and like to teach and like to travel, like, it all really revolves around being curious about things that are beyond me mm -hmm. and outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And so curiosity is a great sort of um, thing, trait to develop. Mm -hmm. And I would say the other life lesson that's really important is, you know, the reason you have to know what you really want to say, that whole aspect yeah. of what I do really comes down to my sort of philosophy of life, which is also just to do less and I mean that both like I said it's life it's also work it's everything when in doubt you do less you you, you say less you you write less you know your email should be shorter you should do every, except for telling you know your family that you love them and things like that mm. with, with very few exceptions everything you do you should do less of and mm. that makes life better oh well I'm gonna have to sign up for a consultation with you because that's something <laughs> I'm working on now yeah. and I imagine that's very helpful to yeah. many people as well and we already have run out of time. Um, so we should learn less. <laughs> well, I think it was just right and very interesting. I would like to know more, but uh, that's how you should be leaving people too, right? Great. So thank you very much for your time, and I wish you the best in your business with your family and travels and all that you do, and, and thank you for what you do in the world and helping us to, uh, for important information to come alive and for being you. Thank, thank you very you. much. It was fun.